Okay, I apologize about having to restart this in the middle of the opening. Uh, something went wrong with the previous one. But uh, it's a good update. We had something that arrived from right stuff that y'all don't get to see me open. And I already opened this box, obviously, so I can dig everything out. As you can see, it's a very nice release week with the only real problem, the only thing missing today being uh, stuff that was going to arrive, um, the, some non-anime stuff which UPS, or well, Amazon had UPS hand out to the Postal Service and delivery of that stuff isn't as good. And not only do we have this stuff here, but some other stuff on the side. So let's get started. First we have uh, K, the complete series, I think. It's not KK, it's just K. But this is c c confusing. But that side, that aside. Come on, plastic, come off. This is already a pretty different, um. Not the very stereotypical. Oh, no wonder. This isn't Viz. I, or this isn't Funimation. I thought it was Funimation for some reason. But no, it's Viz. So they've got this little hook on. And this has the information on the back. But because it's hook on, I'm actually going to set it aside here. Because uh, I can't store it inside there. And that's kind of not so great. So I guess I don't know much about this series. I'm kind of curious why... Well, this is why it feels heavy. Actually, this feels kind of heavy, too. It looks like a more perverted series, which is not usually up Viz's alley. So maybe they are expanding. We see Blu-ray, Blu-ray, and then DVD, DVD, and another slightly perverted one. According to the back, this is Region A only. Which may not be a surprise. I don't know that I've seen any Viz releases that are both A and B. We've got a lot of stuff in here about the series. Or is this not a series? I'm actually not sure. Now, because I never looked it up. I mean, for all I know, 325 minutes sounds like a series. Oh, and it does say complete series right there. So... I guess that's what it is. Next up is Lily Cat, which I've never seen, but I'm familiar with it because I did buy it on VHS because it was never released on DVD, except for now. So, hooray to Eastern Star for uh, resurrecting some anime titles. I mean, they even brought us... Was it them that brought us Unico? I don't know. They, they seem to be playing the part that... Um, Central Park Media used to play, or I, I don't remember. Oh, what's this? Blast from the past. We have a sticker, and of course, we need to properly dispose of it. So the disc itself is fairly simple. Now this anime's out on DVD. And I don't know what it's about. Seems like a good excuse to watch it. We have Appleseed 13, Tartaros, and Uranos. That's an O, not a D, right? This one is Region A only. Funimation. So that was definitely a worthwhile thing to check. I'm wondering if before I go and try and watch this, if I need to rewatch the older apple seed stuff. Because I kind of realized I might be mixing up the first two movies in my head. Like, I'm not properly remembering what is what. Um, let's see. So this is a DVD. This is a DVD. And this is a Blu-ray with both of those on it. I guess. Huh. Next up we've got Love, Election, and Chocolate. 
which I have no idea why it's called that. It's very strange. Looks like it's subtitled only. Yes. Both of them only say Japanese audio. And that's worthwhile to check because um, Sentai usually releases their titles on Blu-ray. They've only more recently been experimenting with subtitle only Blu-ray releases. Which I'm okay with because I just want the anime. I don't know much about the series itself, of course. Is mixing politics, education, and romance a recipe for success? Well, I guess I'd have to watch the series to find out, because uh, usually they do whatever they want to do, and sometimes it works out. Let's see. This one is Region A only. And we've got... As usual, Sentai has the two discs and the Blu-ray version, matching the artwork from two of the three discs there. So we've got the first discs are matching as always. And this time, the second disc arts are matching. Always amusing to check. Let's see. Next up, we've got a... The Girls und Panzer OV8 series, I guess. This one does have a dub. And is regions A and B. I guess that could be part of... I don't know. For a while I was thinking, oh yeah, maybe the stuff that are dubbed are going to be released internationally. But I'd have to take a look at everything else. And to be honest, since those are all over the place... It could be kind of hard. Although, maybe not as hard as I'm complaining about, given that uh, my Blu-rays are in a far more isolated area compared to the DVDs. DVDs, of course, are everywhere, but Blu-rays are still limited to their one shelf. And a gigantic pile sitting next to the television and stuff I maybe want, kind of want to sort of watch at some point. Hmm... Okay, we got the Girls in Panzer OVA. Looks like a swimsuit episode. And the rather straightforward uh, discard for both of them on the inside. So, um, we got a Winter Garden. And I'm not sure if that's pronounced Digicarrot or Digicherry, because it might be French. And this one's Japanese with English subtitles. And this one I'm pretty sure was never released here before. It's been the confusing thing and I probably ought to revisit and check to make sure the other recent Digimon releases. Or not Digimon, but Digicarrot. That's how I'm going to pronounce it for now. Uh, I, I need to really make sure that they weren't... Um, Uh, that that they haven't been that there are things that have been re released before and I do have probably just a good idea to double check that. But yeah, this one I'm pretty sure I don't. We've got Mighty Space Miners, another uh, Eastern Star release. Basically, I feel kind of lucky that the Eastern Star release has made it for today's update. I'm actually glad a couple of things made it for today's update because. Um, some of them were maybe not going to be in. With these, there was a possibility that they would arrive in stock at Amazon's warehouse today, as opposed to arriving by today. But no, it looks like uh, they're doing well enough on their uh, releases, I guess, to get it there early. That's actually amusing. Otherwise, I don't know much about this anime. But that's 
been what's kind of nice about Eastern Star. In fact, uh, here's another Eastern Star release. Um, Dallas. And I'm not sure what this one is. Other than a complete OVA series. You know, I should probably check the, down here in the back. Let's go back to Lily Cat. It's near the bottom here. I, I suspect we'll look at the back here. I don't know. It looks like... Oh, no. A audio is English or Japanese. So for my Mighty Space Miners, we got English or Japanese. Okay. That's what I thought. I don't think they're dubbing these. I think they're looking for things that uh, are kind of easier to put out. But other companies are just kind of overlooking. Maybe because they're not big cash cows or something like that. Basically, so I'm going to guess Mighty Space Miners probably had a... VHS or Laserdisc released before, and that's why they're dubbed. And Dallas, I noticed, only has a Japanese audio, so this is Japanese with English subtitles. So this one, maybe it didn't. Maybe this is something that they've imported on their own. There could be other things like that. I just haven't thought about looking into that, poking around. Let's see. Did they release this the North Star? I don't remember. <sighs> okay, and the disc on the inside is pretty simple, but as expected. And this isn't even the last, so it's not even last but not least, but it's the complete season two of Blast of Tempest. And this, of course, is an Aniplex of America release, so it was not only expensive, but it's got a bit of weight to it as... Yeah, hopefully that thunder doesn't um, bring down my internet connection or my power in the middle of this. And since I haven't watched the first season, I can't comment too much about this. Uh, we got your standard uh, Aniplex proof of purchase and... Uh, other thing, we've got the usual Aniplex poster. Not knowing much about this, she's wearing less clothes than I think she was on the cover. Huh. And then we've got a booklet with information. Related to the second season, I guess. And given that the episodes look like they start at like 14 or something. Hmm, this seems like a familiar problem with the previous Blast of Tempest release. I don't know. Ah. But let's not stop there. The um, Kamisama Kiss Goddess Edition also arrived. And when I was describing this to a friend, I'm like... I'm actually kind of interested in it because I want to pick up... Because it looks like a series that's pretty stereotypically shoujo. Especially since it looks like a reverse harem. And hey, I think I even compared it to like Fruits Basket and hey, from the director of Fruits Basket. So I have to say I'm kind of looking forward to that. We can see... Also premise-wise, about all I've picked up is that it's kind of got an initial premise... Somewhat reminiscent of Kamisama Kiss, which I also really like. And I re really like that one for, of course, a couple of different reasons. But I like the premise of that one also. I want to see how this one plays with that. I guess I do want to be careful about opening this, since it does come with more stuff inside of it. Here's the part that I haven't seen. This actually arrived Friday, but I was not in a rush to watch it because... What's the rush to watch it? I have a lot of stuff to watch, basically. And I wanted to save the opening of it for y'all. Uh, so there are two... I already noticed that there were two cases. One says Blu-ray. The other says... Well, this one doesn't say DVD on here, but it says it aside there. Let's put these aside so we can take everything out before. Because this is heavy. So it most likely has that stuff in there. All the extra stuff. 
And as you can see, they're packed in there kind of tight. So this looks like a fan. And they're a little tight. I guess this piece of paper here is supposed to indicate that it's sealed. Won't, so that you kind of know that it's uh, fresh and hasn't been opened. I don't see a definitive way to open it other than to just take it off. So let's do so. And in doing so, see what it takes to... Fold it. Interesting. So this is what it looks like. I've never tried opening something like this before, so I think that's right. Oh, it moves there pretty well. Let's very carefully seal it, because I'm most likely... I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with it. Gut reaction says maybe there's wall space, maybe there's not. Okay, let's try this black bag next. This is the hairpin thing. Feels like it's made of metal all the way through, which is good. I think it kind of looked sort of last scene in the picture I saw and this has me feeling more relieved like this could actually survive usage shipping traveling Cause as I was taking out I was wondering oh what if that thing's really delicate what am I gonna do if it got broken but this looks like it's far more delicate it's actually somewhat more sturdy than I thought it might be next up we do have a um, Charm bag. Sorry, there's the, sorry, the opening. This is a long video this week. And maybe it could be opened up. Or maybe it doesn't need to be. And I guess. Let's see, I guess before I play with that, we have our seven postcards. Nice. The assumption is I'll be putting everything back in the bag. But, uh, let's, uh, scoot the camera up here to take a better look at the tote bag, because this tote bag is tote, tote bag. Har, har, har. So, size-wise, I'm guessing this is okay thing. It's not super huge. Hmm. Nothing on the back. So my first interesting thought about this is this might make a better um, stocking than the stocking I have, which is always hanging in the corner over there. And that thing is cheap and non-spectacular. It didn't need to be, but... Hmm. Okay, let's uh, point it back down here. And... I'm not sure how I'm even going to get the tote bag back in there, so perhaps I should just accept the fact that these goodies are too good to um, put back in the bag, and I should assume they will become official decorations around the room. Probably makes sense since I couldn't put that back on there. So, 
I'll just move those aside. And I guess it makes sense to leave those in there for now. If, uh, I assume there's probably going to be more released of this series since I think it's longer than 13 episodes. So, like I said, we've got apparently, we've apparently got DVD and Blu-ray cases. This would be the DVD case, which has three discs. Disc one, DVD. Disc two, DVD. Disc three, DVD. Some artwork with a random Bishonen on it. Well, I say random, but apparently these characters are going to be your main male love interests. So we got the Blu-ray versions here. And uh, let's look at the back. This is Region A only. English and Japanese languages. So it looks like it's got a dub. This one, of course, only has two discs. And the discs are all pretty simple. But the packaging is probably far more noteworthy anyways. Just because of all the extras the Goddess Edition especially comes with. And since I can save this, then i um, inserting this in there for no reason. So, you'd think I'd be done, but actually I'm not. I still have two more things, so I'll set one here. We've got Blackjack's box set one. This would be the first Anime Souls release. If you're not familiar with it, Anime Souls is basically a Kickstarter pretty much focused specifically on anime. And I think I mentioned before that it's been a problem for me to keep up with because it's... Um, there were just too many options. I haven't um, gone forward and put uh, donations into other series yet. Instead, I've just pre-ordered Creamy Mommy. But uh, it's been a busy couple of weeks. And you can see, li like I showed you, the discs are press discs. So they're definitely professional release quality. And it looks pretty good. So what can I say about it? Well, I'll probably talk about that in a little bit, given what I watch, what I've watched. But uh, for now, we've got uh, the Imagination release I mentioned, the first disc of Cat's Eye, which, like I said, Imagination is pretty rare because these things were released. Um, they were only released as burn on demand. So only really the people who wanted or were particularly interested in something were. Would buy it. There, there's not excess stock sitting around anywhere. And on top of that, and of course there's only one disc. On top of that, they were only around in 2007, and I don't think they were around for even a full year. So, of the three series they released, I now have the first disc of all three. Second disc of Super Dimensional Century Orgus. A lot of these days, I can hope that I get the rest, but for now, I'm just glad that I've got the first disc of. The third series and I I've been looking on eBay for a couple of years now and it took thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of false hits mostly hits to Stephen King's cat's eye starring Drew Barrymore apparently because she's on the cover so it's a movie I've never watched I guess you could say seeing it a couple thousand times I've thought about watching it but I've never watched it this is a good update but yeah, I finally got the one hit. Well, other than this, there's also been a couple listings for the Japanese Blu-ray release. As far as I can tell, that doesn't have English subtitles. Man, this is a pretty awesome update this week. <sighs> Watching-wise, I'm trying to think. Um, well, I've watched three things. First of all, I watched uh, the first 11 episodes of Robotics Notes that were released. It's a pleasant anime. Um... I kind of wish I was watching it subtitled, though, because I can't help but feel like it would be easier to follow the um, net slang girl in that case. But that aside, eh. and I wouldn't even say that she's a character that particularly strikes me as definitely good. She's amusing, but not a personal preference. Um, the anime itself feels... A bit more lighthearted than Steins Gate, but I guess it's because 
Well, I'm, I'm comparing the Steins Gate because there's kind of, you know, they're made by the same person or people or whatever, but... So you kind of wonder what sorts of, um... What's similar between them in terms of execution and the way they're presented and whatnot. And sometimes you can see similar things, sort of like between the different uh, movies Miyazaki has directed, or even like series he's directed. I mean, even though everybody in Sherlock Hound were dogs, you can kind of tell, oh my god, Miyazaki definitely did the uh, storyboards for that because he pretty much makes the anime by hand and everybody is filling in his art style, I guess. At least that's the impression I get, so that's why a lot of his character designs tend to be pretty distinctive and recognizable. So that's a little bit of a tangent, but basically with Robotics Notes, there's still a conspiracy sort of um, underlying setup. But unlike the previous two, Steinsgate and that Chaos whatever thing whose name I've been having trouble remembering for the past couple of days, um, it was a Chaos Edge. There's definitely conspiracy things set up in those that are kind of... They feel like they have more pre um, presence in those. I think uh, probably the first one was the most strong in that respect. Whereas with Steins Gate, it kind of felt like the conspiracy was there. Definitely impo or an imposing constant thing. But like the dabbling of the characters was also in itself dangerous in a different way. And Steins Gate is kind of scary. This one hasn't been particularly scary. It looks like there's going to be some sort of relation between the conspiracy and what our characters are doing, maybe. But it's not apparently obvious, and it's not apparently obvious that what our characters are doing is necessarily dangerous. So instead, it's being a bit more amusing and slightly light-hearted than uh, maybe... No, I think I was about expecting that. Somehow I've gotten the impression it would be like that, and measuring up to expectations there. So, like, uh, let's see. It's hard to really say what this one will be like overall because this one's kind of set up where moment to moment it doesn't have me as into it as Steinsgate did. But it could still have a very neat overall story and just be a nice anime overall. And right now it's just got me at that you've got my attention. I just need the second half of it. Why don't I have the second half of it yet? Um, let's see. After that, I started watching, like, the first five or so episodes of Jormungand. That's the anime whose pronunciation I didn't know, and based on the first episode, it's definitely not pronounced that way, but I'll be damned if I can remember how they actually pronounced it, because I think it's, uh, I don't know. It's definitely, well, I kind of expected it would be a different language. I just didn't know if that spelling was supposed to be uh, the phonetical spelling or just a kind of tricky one, I guess. And that one, I, I'd actually say that from moment to moment, Jormungand is actually being more entertaining than Robotics Notes. Robotics Notes is definitely excelling in the area of uh, developing an overall story, whereas Jormungand is just kind of amusing. I mean, I didn't even know what it was about, and I just kind of assumed that the character on the front was a Bishonen. I'm like, okay, it's time to see what he does. Turns out it's not a Bishonen. It's a, just a slightly crazy girl who's um, a weapons dealer. And apparently they've got the world's only Ishbalan on their team. Or something like that. I don't know. I would have continued watching that. The truth of the matter is I really needed dubbed stuff because I kind of started for a personal programming project and so I needed to be able to pay attention to two things at once. I wanted that anime on in the background. And then um, yesterday the Anime Souls Blackjack release arrived and I kind of knew I wanted to prioritize uh, checking that out. Partially because I was very interested in the series. Blackjack's always been a kind of interesting show to go back and revisit every once in a while. Really nice mystery of the medical, mest medical mystery ver variety, but it's always been really compelling, and I kind of wanted to explore the TV series itself, 
And I also wanted to be able to talk about Anime Souls' first release. And I can say that overall it's nice. There's only one problem I would actually ha say with it. And this is a problem you p usually see with earlier anime DVDs, I guess. And that's uh, chapter skipping. You can't skip the previews for the next episode. And this basically happens because they create the chapters on the video and they don't create one at the very end of the title itself for you to skip to the next episode. And with any look, maybe somebody who works for Anime Souls or works for manufacturing or pressing these sees this and says, oh, is that all that was wrong with it? Well, that's easy to fix. And I certainly hope it's easy to fix because um, otherwise I thought it was a really good release. I didn't watch all of it, but I did watch seven or eight episodes. Basically, I finished the episode with the white line in it. I pretty much knew I wanted to push myself last night to that point because I watched Kimba the White Line. It wasn't way back when, so it's not a nostalgic release or icon, but I watched Kimba the White Lion sometime within the last ten years, and I thought that was a pretty enjoyable show, and I kind of wanted to see what that episode in particular had to do with it, but also just the exploration of Blackjack. So, for the series itself, it's, um... I'm sorry, I had the right words for this. It's kind of morally straightforward, I guess. Like, they will place a character there who is very clearly the corrupt politician, and he just overplays the part. So maybe a little bit overdramatic. But, you know, it's supposed to be a part of the story and kind of hammer a point home. Regarding the Blackjack medical mystery stuff, there isn't as much of it this time, but I kind of expected that because... There's more characters to it, so it's not really about Blackjack so much as the things that happen around him, which includes what he does and how things that happen around him tie into what he does, such as, oh, well, now this animal needs to be saved. Oh, well, here's another doctor who's actually uh, not the kind of person that charges 100000 to 500000 for surgery. And I guess given Blackjack's age, he's a bit advanced for his time in terms of predicting the future of where the U.S. health system would seem to go, I guess, but I don't know. Anyways, once you understand that stuff, this one, if you are familiar with um, Osamu Tezuka, that probably doesn't sound um, off from other works he's done, because watching it, I'm like, you know, that's actually exactly what he always does. That maybe is why I had a problem with Phoenix. Like, Phoenix tried to feel deep, but he doesn't usually do deep so much as thoughtful. Like, he wants to set up this moral situation where you're like, okay, you've got three patients here. Uh, what order do you do the operations in? It's like, well, that one's about to die. That one is closer to dying. That one's not actually near, de near death. Things like that. And... I think it's entertaining, and I want to watch more of it. It's just information overload. Especially since today I got an awesome amount of stuff. I'll have to actually decide if I want to intentionally continue pushing on watching Blackjack. No, I'm, go I'm definitely going to watch that, and then I guess I'm going to try and finish Jormungan. Or at least the first season of Jormungan, just because... Better if I don't leave things in the middle of watching. So, with any luck, this will actually be a week where I accumulate a lot of watch stuff. <sighs> Alright. That was a pretty exhausting update because there was just so much to it. It was nice. Now, is there anything else? I couldn't help but wonder if maybe something else showed up. I guess uh, the next two Monogatari releases from Aniplex were listed on right stuff. And it's my understanding that you got Nekomonogatari Black and Nekomonogatari White. But one of those is uh, the series known strictly as Nekomonogatari. Whereas the other is the first story of Monogatari's second season. Which is kind of confusing, but I, I'm okay with following along with it. I'm looking forward to watching it. That aside, I can't think of anything else specifically to talk about. So I guess um, I'll have to end my update there. Y'all have a nice week.